Hey, what's your going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grand Peace Workshop. I like it when you drop by the shop. Thank you very, very much. Uh, today, I'm out here behind the shop at my bulk fuel tank. Uh, I, got, I got some changes I want to make to this tank, and I want to talk to you about those changes. So, here's my gasoline storage tank. Uh, it holds about 45 liters of fuel. Uh, and what I would do is I would go to the gas station, fill up my jerry cans with fuel, bring it home. I have to, in order to fill this, I have to put the jerry can up my shoulder and hold it there for it seemed like a long time while it emptied through this fill pipe and into the tank. Uh, it, it took a long time to empty the jerry cans. And to be honest, that was just a little bit too much effort for me to hold that jerry can up there on my shoulder for that long a period of time. So I wanted to come up with a solution to make that easier for me. Uh, the other thing, I mounted this tank up high because it's a gravity feed tank. I bring my lawnmowers or whatever it might be alongside and I can use this hose then to gravity fill from the tank into the tank on the machine. Uh, because it's gravity feed, I wanted to put a filter on it one time so I got a 0.5 micron filter I think it was. I'm not sure exactly about that but anyway uh, the fuel wouldn't flow through the filter just with gravity. It needed to be pumped through it uh, so that didn't work. So consequently I'm here with no filter on my gas and I don't like that. Not, a, not even a little bit. The other thing is, I bought this hose and automotive type fill nozzle. This, I must say, worked really good. I was very pleased with the nozzle. <coughs> but the hose itself, when I just show you, it's stiff as a board now. It's almost like a piece of pipe. And it doesn't bend too good. Probably leaks too, right? So the hose would have to be replaced if I was to continue to use this tank. So I thought, instead of buying a new hose, run this tank with no filter, maybe there's a better solution to that. So I want to take you in the shop now and show you what my plan is to replace my bulk storage fuel tank out here. So these are the jerry cans I bought. Remember I did a review on those. I'll leave a link to that video down below if you want to check those out. And uh, I also bought this electric fuel pump with an automatic shutoff. And I'll leave a link to that video down below where I reviewed these, these pump, this electric pump. It's pretty neat. I like it. I like it a lot. What I'd like to do is Instead of getting my going to the gas station, filling this up with fuel, bring it home, lifting on my shoulder to fill that tank out back, I'm thinking if I just make a little uh, dolly cart that I can put these tanks on, and then just put the pump in that, and then I can wheel the cart around to where I need the fuel. Like when my uh, when my generator is low in fuel, I can't bring the generator to my bulk storage tank out back. I have to take the jerry can to the generator. So I thought this might be a much much better solution, more mobile, more flexible, and more user friendly. So that's what I'm going to try and do today is make a little dolly cart to put this on. So I've got several different sizes of jerry cans that I probably will end up putting on this fuel cart dolly. <laughs> so I've got to make sure that however big I build it, it can accommodate all these cans. I need to make a base for it and uh, let me see, this is probably the, the widest gas can that I would have. All my diesel cans are the same as this, so I need something that's going to be probably 20 inches wide and not 20 inches deep too maybe. So anyways, let's go see what we can dig up for that. So uh, I'm making this fuel can cart dolly <laughs> out of scraps. So I got this old piece of aspenite that's in really rough shape. Anyway, I think it's going to work all right for the base. I'm going to set up my fence here for 18 inches. Okay, so there's my base. Just checking now to see how square it is. That's 27 and 3 quarters. 27 and a half. That's not very square, is it? One of the hazards of using scrap materials is you never know if it was cut square or not. So I have a factory edge along here. I'm going to base everything off of that factory edge. So how square is this side here? Doesn't look too bad. And this side here doesn't look too bad. Yeah, but this, this edge here is not square. I'm going to set my fence again and we'll cut this. Okay, now let's check it for square. 27 and 5 eighths. 27 and 5 eighths, that's more like it, eh? So now what I want to do is I want to, 
I, I want to put a, a, an edge around this. Um, and what I want to do is uh, have a little bit of a lip on it so that when I put the cans on it, they won't slide off. So I'm going to, this is not very flat, is it? So I'm going to make that edge out of, uh, out of one by four uh, brand of flooring. It's five quarter wood. 22 at 24. And then two at 20. All right. So those pieces of veranda flooring that I cut for the perimeter of the base, uh, I want to put a, a dado in them. I have this, uh, I got this a long time ago. It's a wobble, wobble blade for making dados. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the way I set that up is uh, there's just the one blade and there's two cheeks on it to go together. And depending on where you position the cheeks, uh, regulates how much the blade wobbles and then therefore how wide you make your dado. So uh, it's hard to see but if you look right on the edge of the uh, blade here, I'll try and show you. Right there, I don't know well that's going to focus but there's dimensions along there on, on uh, what the sizes would be. I need it to be around 5 eighths and of course there's no 5 eighths so I'm going to set it just a little bit above. Oh there is a 5 eighths, how about that? I'm going to set it at 5 eighths and I'm going to put this on my saw and uh, cut a test at O and see if it fits around my uh, aspamate. So once more, uh, I have my, my dado set in the saw now, but uh, I don't have a, a backer plate for it here, a template to go on it. Don't recommend you do it this way, but this is all I have, so I'll be, I'll be careful. So it does a pretty good job of cutting the dado. Of course, this is just hemlock, pretty soft, but anyways, let's see how it fits on the OSB. Not bad. The OSB is so swollen, this was only a half inch OSB, and uh, it's been swollen up so much that I have to cut it 5 eighths, and even the 5 eighths doesn't fit it everywhere, but I think it'll be all right. I can make this fit a 5 eighth dado. So I'm going to set, say, one and a half inches on the fence and that way when the blade comes around it'll be about an inch from the bottom and maybe two inches from the top so it'll be in the bottom third that's about where I want it right however when it comes time to run my piece through here because I have no throat plate here look what's going to happen eh? there's nothing to support my piece so that's no good I don't like that so what I did was it took some time I had some half inch aspenite so I took some measurements of this opening and I cut a throat piece to put in there. So it fits in there not too bad. Uh, there's a screw that holds it in place. So I need to find that hole so I can drill a hole in the end of it here. Right. So what I did to find that was I just took I just, it's just a threaded stud and I sharpened the end on it made a point. So I'm going to stick that in this hole. Just about like that. And then I want this side to be up. Doesn't really matter much. But anyway, we'll set that in place. Maybe this way better. Yeah. And then just pound that down with my fist. Crank the blade up to get it off. And now I've got a hole here where I can drill to put an excess hole in here for a, for a screw to hold it in place. All right, so make sure this is all cleaned out. I'll put this in place. We put this screw down in here to hold it. I drilled a hole and then a, a countersink hole around it so that the screw head would be below the surface of the unit. Okay, so that should make it a lot safer now when I set my fence to an inch and a half. Oh yeah, that's going to work good, eh? Now, how do I get the hole in that? Well, we're just going to turn the saw on and uh, bring it up through the plate.
That looks pretty good right there. Okay, so now we should be able to run our pieces through here. And because I have these uh, edges now on my throat plate, I can see that it's going to cut right here and right here. So, you know, that's about an inch and a half in the top, an inch and a quarter in the bottom. So that should be just about perfect. So let's try this and see what happens. So it does a pretty nice job cutting a rabbit or a dado. So I'm going to do it with the other three pieces and then we'll be back. Okay, now the fun starts. Uh, I have to fit these around this base. So how do I cut them? <laughs> I started off by uh, drawing some lines at 45 degree angle from each corner. So I've got four lines on there. So I'm going to just take this piece and put a 45 in the end of it to start with. So I'll go do that. Okay, so that's that one done. I want the short side to be on the top, so we're going to set this in here. By the way, uh, my Aspenite was so swollen, I had to run it through with the Dado blade and just thin it down a little so it would fit in my pieces. So now I have that set up right. Whoa, that scared me. Put on the wrong side. Oh, baby. Okay, so that's going to go in there. So now I want to line up this 45 with this line that I drew in the corner. Like that. Make sure that this piece is pushed in tight to the aspenite. And then I'll mark here where this 45 line meets up on the board. I'll take this off of there. And then I'll draw a line on here. And then I'll draw another line across here. And then my cut should as long as I cut back to this line, it should be good, right? So let's cut it and see. Okay, let's, let's try this. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, and then I'm going to try this on the other side just to make sure that it fits. And if it does, I'll cut both pieces the same. It should because the base plate here is supposed to be square, but you just never know. That's going to be good. So I'm going to cut the other piece like this, do the same procedure to cut the two sides, and then we'll be back, try a little bit of assembly here. All right, so we know that the, it fits not too bad, so I'm going to make sure that I have these wide parts facing towards the bottom. So this is the top of the deck that I want to face up. So I'm going to put that like that, and put this like this. Now the problem is, how do I get this lined up? Well, yeah, I smartened up a little bit too. I got a piece of cardboard on my saw here, right? Eh? So I don't drip glue and everything all over it. All right, I'm going to try and put a screw in it. See what happens. We're just going to put one screw in it for now. Now, uh, this one here is going to go on this side. Okay, I'm going to put a little glue on this joint here. So afraid I'm going to mess this up, eh? <laughs> Smear some more schmoo on here. So there we have it, and just to try to keep these edges together, so we're going to put a couple of brads in here.
So that's my base. So the base is finished. Uh, I think that's a good start. So I'm not going to be able to finish it all in this one episode. So there's, sorry, there's going to be more. So stay tuned for next exciting episode to see is there going to be wheels on this gas cart? Is there going to be handles on this gas cart? Is it even going to work as a gas cart? <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think. Don't forget to thumbs up me folks. Hope you have a great week too wherever you are. And we'll talk to you.